I got in a situation where I need some fast NVMe storage, and I could have bought a Thunderbolt to NVMe adapter, but let's be honest, what's the point of having a home lab if you can't solve the, solve the problem with a brand new server? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be building a new server today to help with my issues. So I gotta get this thing out of here. Before taking a look at the new system, I just wanna de-rack my old rack mount system first, so that way I can begin building the new system and get everything, but really I just need to get everything transferred over. So that is the goal of this, and this thing is going to be so freaking heavy. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank God for sliding rails. Oh boy, it's heavier than I remember. <laughs> we gotta transfer everything out of here and into the new server. Oh man, she's a big boy. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? So we'll be going from this Rosewell chassis, that's a custom Ryzen 5800X uh, system. I've talked about this in the past, Previously made videos about it. So this is pretty well covered, but basically all you need to know is that I think it has 32 gigs, a 5800X with Ryzen, and then we'll be switching over to this Xeon platform. So this is a dual Xeon 4114 system. We, I plan on upgrading the 4114 Xeons in the future because I do have an upgrade path, and this currently has 64 gigs of RAM. That's basically all you need to know. We're just gonna transfer everything from here into this chassis. And that's really it. The real important reason why I'm actually switching away from the 5800X over to these Xeons, these much older, slower Xeons, is because I need more PCIe lanes. This Ryzen system just does not have enough PCIe lanes to support my needs. And my needs have changed because I have a new camera now, which I'm actually using right here to record this video. And when the recordings are uncompressed, they take up so much space on my MacBook that I no longer have any room to edit. So I need some faster storage. And like I mentioned before, I could have very easily have bought a Thunderbolt 4 to a Thunderbolt 4 NVMe adapter and stuck like one eight terabyte hard drive in there. And that probably would have solved my issue perfectly fine. But honestly, guys, What's the point of having this hardware if you can't have fun with it? So, well, I guess I did have to buy this. I feel like this is a better, maybe not a better solution, but a fun solution, building my own uh, editing workstation or editing server, whatever you want to call it. I, you know, something I've always wanted to try and do, and now I have that opportunity. Now I have used this Ryzen system in the past and it's been great, but unfortunately we just need more space or more data. So I'll be ripping out this quad NVMe adapter from here, and there's only two NVMe drives in there. And I will also be placing this quad NVMe adapter inside of this server as well. So we'll have six, six NVMe drives inside of this server, which is gonna be really freaking awesome. Can't forget the USB thumb drive. This is literally, everything in here is literally being transplanted over. Well, not everything, just most things. Let's slide this out of the way for now, because I don't really need it to be here. And so, like I mentioned before, um, I will be putting six NVMe drives in this system. And we, the reason why this works is because these CPUs are capable, the CPU and motherboard are capable of bifurcation. Now my Ryzen motherboard in here is also capable of bifurcation, but I'm actually limited to only two NVMe drives because Ryzen just doesn't have enough PCIe lanes. PCIe lanes, I think it only has like 20 or something like this. And this isn't a problem with Ryzen itself. It's also an issue on Intel consumer chips as well. So I couldn't just switch over to something like a 14700K or 14900K, something like that, as awesome as that would be. Now, one thing I need to be very careful of on this system is that only certain PCIe slots are by 16. So those, those by 16 lanes can be split into four lanes each, allowing me to use my NVMe drive. So I have to be very particular about where I put these adapters or else they might not work. And I also have to get in the BIOS and set that all up. So I believe all of the top PCIe lanes are by 16, except for the one on the far back left or back right corner, depending on how you're oriented. So we will be using those. Now, I'm also gonna be losing a lot of capability here on my GPU encoding. So I'm gonna try this out and I may end up adding a Quadro P4000 in the future. It just really depends on how I wanna approach this in the future. But I think we're for now, we're just gonna test it out. I do have my power adapters. If I do wanna stick some Quadro cards in here, I can stick two Quadro cards in here. I have uh, plenty of power for that. I have two dual redundant PSUs in here that are a thousand watts each. So super powerful. 
And what's really cool about this, and I'll have to show you, is that this has onboard USB. It's actually got two onboard USB. One allows you to use this front USB port, and the other one is actually hidden underneath the chassis. Let's take a look at that. I think actually hidden underneath this panel right here, there, yep, there we go, is a USB connector where I'm gonna stick my Unraid boot um, drive, so my USB drive. So we can boot from here, and it's hidden away and secure so we don't have to worry about it ever coming unplugged or anything like that, which is gonna be really freaking cool. Oh, crap. I just realized that the motherboard in the Ryzen system comes with a 10 gigabit network adapter and I'm actually gonna need one. So I hope, uh, I think I have one on the shelf over there. Let me go steal that. All right, I'll be adding in this Intel X540 T2. So this has two ethernet, two 10 gig ethernet ports on the rear. So we're just gonna slot this in on this towards the bottom and hopefully uh, it all works. I'm sure it'll work. There's really, this should just be plug and play to be honest. Oh shoot, it's half height. Okay, well, I guess we will go for the next best slot here. All right, let's get our NV NVMe adapter, our quad NVMe adapter back in. One of the many last things I need to do is actually transfer over all of my hard drives from the existing server into the new one. And I think I have roughly about 20 terabytes of drives. We have two parity drives, and then the rest are um, just, you know, for the data pool. Now, what makes this chassis unique and why I don't need to transfer my, LS my LSI 92118i HBA card over is because this actually has a RAID card already installed. So I don't need to transfer that. All I really need to do is just transfer over the drives and we should be good to go. Now I do suspect that we'll have some issues with the PERC card because it is a RAID card. It doesn't technically support just a bunch of disks mode or IT mode but it does have like an HBA mode that we can set, I believe. So we can still get um, HBA, or I'm sorry, just a bunch of discs. Hey! <laughs> just a bunch of discs uh, mode or IT mode like we could on the LSI card. So I'll figure that part off, off camera. Uh, all the that you guys I think care about is the hardware itself and how we get from point A to point B, right? And I guess the journey is part of the problem or part of the way. So I believe this is my first parity disc. So I'm just gonna do these one-to-one -one in the order that I want that's convenient for me. So that way I don't forget which disc goes where. It's all about setting yourself up for success. Oh man, this is gonna be a lot of work from here on. Let's get this maneuvered a little bit differently so I can work with it. Now I know some of you out there are probably wondering what kind of hard drives I use with, oh wow, <laughs> almost dropped that one which kind of hard drives I use for Unraid. And I actually use a mix of hard drives. Uh, as of late, I've been using Western Digital Easy Store drives that I've been removing from their shell. I've covered this pretty extensively in the past. I even have multiple videos about it, so definitely check that out. But I also have WD Red drives. They're the non-pro version. I think they've changed a lot since I've bought them, so I don't know if I'd buy them again. I'd really have to do some research about whether or not the WD Reds are worth it these days. I haven't really been keeping up. As far as NVMe drives go, I also have a mix of those. Now, I like to get my NVMe drives used off of eBay because you can get them really cheap. There's tons of OEM drives that are taken out of like OEM systems, or not OEM, yeah, OEM systems or used workstations like this. And I've totally taken advantage of eBay for that. Now, one terabyte drives have gotten extremely cheap. I'm using six one terabyte drives. So probably not the best idea anymore because you could just buy one terabyte drives for cheap. Now, I plan on upgrading these in the future to some larger drives, um, actually four of them to some larger drives. I would like to get some SK Hynix four terabyte, four four terabyte drives. Now, those are gonna be the gold P31 drives. I've also bought a pair of those in the past. I've been really happy with them, and I think I'm gonna continue buying them for the time being, as they meet good performance metrics, as well as right endurance. So for the price that you pay, I think you can't really go wrong with those. I also like that, that they have DRAM cache, so that really helps uh, when transferring large data um, over from one system to another, which I do a lot of. So having that has been extremely beneficial in the past and I don't wanna give that up anytime soon. But we're gonna upgrade all these drives in the future. It's just not something I can afford right now because I kind of blew all my budget 
on this one server. I bought this Precision R7920 off eBay for around $800. And I know that can be pretty expensive when you consider that it only came with DDR4, 64 gigs of ECC RAM and the not so good 4114 Xeons. However, on the plus side, I did get a Pro, Dell's Pro Plus support warranty, which is awesome. So that came in handy because when this thing first arrived, I actually had a power supply dead on arrival. So I hit up Dell support and they mailed me a new power supply the very next day. And that's one thing that's really awesome when you're buying used servers off of eBay, or I guess really anywhere, is they usually still have their warranties when companies are done with them. So that worked out for me. Now I've only got till December 23rd, I believe, before my warranty expires. So I definitely gotta find everything wrong with this before it expires. So that way I can get my any parts exchange that might be broken. I absolutely love these rails from Dell. They are so simple to install. And the best part is, is you can install them yourself, which goes a long way when you are a home labber, a lone home labber. Whoa. Uh, I think I did that wrong. All right, I've decided against mounting them on the bottom here because I forgot that I'm gonna install an extended battery module in the future. So I'm actually gonna remove this empty chassis that isn't in use, but I think it might be plugged in. I'm selling this. So there's no point of keeping it racked anyway. And we can just get rid of it. The shelves that that server was sitting on are also sold or being sold. So there's no point of keeping them in here in also. So we'll get rid of this and then we'll put the new Dell server right about here somewhere. I think that'd be pretty good. I keep hearing all these wonderful things about rack studs, but I've yet to get my own pair yet. So maybe one day when I do, we can check them out, but until then, this is old fashioned nuts and screws, baby. Dell says this is explicitly a two man job, but thankfully my server rack's low enough that I can do this on my own without the need of the help of another technician. Normally I would do this on my own anyway, even if the chassis was above my head. Ah, yes, so easy. What the? Right, so all that's left to do is make sure everything showed up, which I think it will. And then we also just need to make sure that we can create a scratch pool. So looking at Unraid now that we're connected, I see all my original discs, they show up in the proper order, so that's cool. I see the original scratch, or I'm sorry, the original cache array or pool that was created uh, originally with, that, with the existing server or the previous server. It looks like I have all my other NVMe devices showing up, showing up here as well. So we need to create a new pool. Uh, this will be our scratch pool. So we'll just call it editing because that's what I need it for. And we need four slots. All right, so we've got our new editing pool created. So now we just need to assign each NVMe drive to it. Now I think we can change, or I'd like to change this to so we will use ButterFS and we're gonna change it to RAID zero. Compression off, trim, we'll leave on. Enable user share assignment. Yeah, we wanna be able to assign this to a user share. Um, I guess we'll leave default everything else. I'm not really sure what else needs to be done for this part. So I guess we'll just hit apply, hit done. And I believe once we start the array, we'll be done from here. Hit start. All right, cool, that seemed to work. So now we just need to format all the drives and we're gonna format those. That'll do whatever it needs to do. And we are really close to being done. Holy cow, this was a lot easier. We can actually see it still formatting right there. Wow, it took a long time to format, but now that it's done, it looks like we just need to convert one of our shares over to the new editing or cache a pool, whatever you want to call it. So going over to shares, I'm going to change this import share over to editing. So right down there in the drop down menu. And what's really cool is that after we're done saving stuff off to um, to this share, things can later be added to the array. So we won't actually lose any data. Now the mover action happens at night. So, you know, I don't know what time that happens or kicks off at, but it's, it's cool that we can at least move that stuff off of the RAID zero 
onto my array. Now, another important thing about this, the reason why I'm so comfortable doing RAID 0 is because I actually have a battery backup. So if the power goes out, I have plenty of time to shut down, like 40 minutes, maybe 30, 40 minutes to shut down everything and make sure that I don't have any data loss. So that's why I'm comfortable doing RAID 0 and then letting the mover handle the action later. All right, so we got our share created and that is good to go. I think, we, I think we're done. I think we can start using this as a cache pool or editing pool, whatever you want to call it. All right, so I think the simplest way to test this is using Blackmagic Design. So I'm gonna start the test tool here and it's actually not that good right now. So we're doing a five gig test and I should be getting well into the one gigabyte per second range. And for whatever reason, I'm just not getting that. Only 393 megabytes per second. So there's probably some tuning that I need to do on my end. Now I know I can get one gigabyte per second because I've done this in the past. So there's probably just something wrong with my configuration. Like I probably need to configure, I don't know, jumbo frames or something. But 407 megabytes per second, still not bad. And our upload was actually really good or our read speed was really good at 664 megabytes per second. And I think we're gonna be more concerned with the reading than we are the writing. So I'm pretty happy with it. It could be better. Uh, it's not terribly impressive, but I'm not ashamed of it either. All right, so admittedly, it's probably faster just to use a Thunderbolt adapter like I mentioned early on in this video, but I just wanna get an idea of what to expect. So I have a, this is only a 256 gigabyte SSD. This is a Samsung 850 Evo. So it's pretty old by today's standards, but it's honestly the only SSD I have laying around that's relatively new that I could use. So we're gonna start this benchmark off testing this and it starts off pretty strong until we fill the cache and then drops down to about 500 megabytes per second and slowly starting to decrease in the write speed. Honestly, still pretty good given today's today's testing with the over the network. Now, obviously this is performing really well. I could do 4K editing, but the problem is that this is only 256 gigabytes. So like I mentioned early on, I would definitely want to buy a Thunderbolt 4 to NVMe drive. So that way I could get, I don't know, 2000 megabytes per second or more. That would be pretty dope. And it would be about the same price, honestly, as just using a server. But where's the fun in that, right? All right, well, these results actually turned out pretty good for this old SSD. So a little bit of egg on my face there. I'm definitely gonna have to go back into Unraid and do some tweaking and figure out why exactly I'm not getting near one gigabyte per second. I think it has more to do with maybe MTU sizes or something like that. So I'll play around with that off camera and well, I guess we'll see what happens in the future. But with all that, <laughs> uh, so this is kind of awkward. I ended up not using Unraid because I was having issues that I showed you previously. And I moved over to Red Hat. I set up my Sambo share with a RAID 0 of all four of those NVMe drives and everything worked as I would expect or as you would expect. And things are good. So I built that entire server and now I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to do with it. I don't know if I should switch over to Red Hat permanently for my video editing server or if I should continue to use Unraid and I don't know, try and figure out or work through the issues that I was experiencing with poor transfer speeds. I'm not entirely sure what to do. Maybe I go back to Ryzen and have two servers. It's always a possibility, but that seems like a lot of power. So I guess this makes this video pretty awkward because I don't know where to go from here. But as far as this video is concerned, mission accomplished. We have a video editing server for now. So yay. All right, bye.